friends, Grace here. Welcome to another presentation which is on Bible cosmology. Now over the last few months or so I have been doing a number of presentations on Bible cosmology, exposing the false sciences of today, NASA, heliocentrism and all sorts. And because of this I have been getting a lot of messages from other Seventh-day Adventists who tell me that this topic is not important, it's unsalvational, it's not part of the third angel's message and so on and so on and they do this based on the quote that Ellen White wrote and I'll just read that quote for you all I'm sure many of you are familiar with this but she tells us whether the world is round or flat will not save a soul but whether men believe and obey means everything and I completely agree with that statement 100% because I believe the world is flat, a triangle, whatever shape doesn't mean that I'm saved. No it doesn't. If I am lying, stealing, even though I have this knowledge it doesn't mean that I'm saved. However what many certain Adventists fail to realise that this doesn't just apply to the subject of Bible cosmology, it applies to all doctrines no theoretical knowledge will save you. Again, another statement she tells us. A belief of doctrines, however pure they may be, will not save a soul from death unless they are brought into contact with the life. The heart must be purified through obedience to the truth. Note that she says a belief of doctrines. So if you believe the seventh day is the Sabbath, does it mean you're saved? No. If you believe in 1844, does it mean you're saved? No. If you believe in Adventist teaching regarding the state of the dead, does it mean that you are saved? No. No theoretical knowledge will save you. The Bible is clear on that. The Apostle tells us knowledge puffs up. He tells us if I have all knowledge and I don't have love it means nothing. So I think this is an elementary teaching pertaining to Christianity that theoretical knowledge doesn't save you. However, does that mean we should stop talking about the state of the dead or the Sabbath? or 1844? No. So why do we talk about it? We talk about those topics because we believe there is power in that particular truth to save a soul and convert them to Christ. And friends, that is exactly how I also feel about Bible cosmology. Why? Because this has been the experience of many. Thousands have come to accept Jesus Christ atheists, I've seen the testimonies, simply by the false sciences of the world being exposed and understand that the Bible had the truth pertaining to that subject all along. So that's why I talk about it. There has never been any type of doctrine or any type of, uh, of, uh, of, of a teaching that pointed to scripture. There is no other movement that, ha that is so great that is causing even unbelievers to come and look at the Bible. And the interesting thing I'll point to all of you is this. <laughs> the people who are saying the earth is flat are not Christians. Did you hear this? The people who are pointing the facts and looking and, uh, and observing the earth, they are saying, or, or the, the majority of them are non-Christians. They don't believe in the Bible. But ever since they came across this discovery, guess what? Many people across the world are coming to the scripture and they're actually looking at this. This is a time of spiritual awakening. The interesting thing that I'm noticing is this, with this flat earth movement, what you're getting is like you're seeing a, a, like a, a switch. The, 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 the atheists or people who are non-believers are coming to examine the Bible and they're actually becoming Christians whereas the Christians are turning against what they're, what they're coming across and they're going the other way around. You understand this? That's what I'm finding interesting. I can tell you this, the Bible has gone through the test of time and the Bible, I can tell you with confidence, the Bible has passed 
the test of time. The Bible has gone through fire and it survived. The devil wanted to get rid of the Bible. He tried burning it. He tried getting rid of God's children. But always in each time of earth history, God always has his remnant. His remnant will always arise from the ashes. I like to be the voice for the minority because this teaching is very unpopular. When you talk, and I, and I never knew this, you know, when I came to understand this topic, I was like, whoa, I need to share this. I never knew there was so much controversy and it was such a taboo subject to talk about it in Adventism. And if you did talk about it in Adventism, then you're seen as being a bit crazy, fanatical and so on. But thank God I have never been one to really care what people think. I just want the truth. I don't care how unpopular it is. If it's truth and it's solidified by the Bible, I will promote it, you know? And that's exactly how I feel about God's geocentric model. I believe it's founded on scripture. I believe having the true understanding pertaining to God's creation can bring someone closer to God. I believe there is salvation in this simple truth when it's preached through the Bible. And I have seen the testimonies that go with this. So I want to be a voice for the minority to encourage them that you are on the right track. This is truth and Continue speaking about it if that's your conviction. Don't care what people think. At the end of the day, Christianity, true Christianity is not popular. It's not about having so many followers or being loved by in Adventism. Who cares about that? That is empty. The only thing that matters is truth and your conscience to God. Alongside that, um, I know many other Saint Adventists you know, who have larger followings, who know what I'm saying is true and are scared to talk about it. Why? Because it's unpopular or because they may lose income or followers. And I think that's such a sad state to be in, to believe something, but you're scared to preach about it because you don't want to lose followers or because you don't want to lose certain sponsors or donations. And to me, that is mad. And that's why it's so important, especially in this time, to also be self-sufficient. The Apostle had his own tent making business. I believe it's so important as Christianity, as Christians, some Adventist Christians, to have a trade, you know, where you can support yourself because the, when you do start preaching biblical truths, be sure to um, lose sponsors or people who don't like you or whatever. But that's fine, you know, what we need to understand. True Christianity, true biblical truth is never um, accepted. Two particular teachings have had a profound experience in my walk with God. One was the Sabbath and this one here, Bible cosmology, understanding the truth, it shocked me. And you know, we just live in a crazy world. So I know some people just think it's just not important. They don't see the significance of it and I can't answer for them. But for me and for many others, it to me, I think it's very significant. The fact that they have lied to me pertaining to God's creation in order to try and push me away from God and doubt the Bible. I have a big problem with that. One thing I hate is lies and dishonesty, you know, so no lie is not of great consequences. The reason why they want to program your children with this before they can think for themselves is to prepare them for the coming delusions ahead. It's to cause them to doubt the Bible because anyone who is sincere, you know that what they teach us, the sciences they teach us pertain to God's creation cannot be reconciled with the Bible. And anyone who is sincere knows this. Even the Jesuits know this, you know. There are two opposing religions. Um, a couple of years ago, I was asked to do a Bible study group. I'm thinking Catholics don't do Bible studies, you know. Mm. And to do a Bible study group in Houston. I mean, Catholics definitely don't do Bible studies in Texas. Mm. To do a Bible study group in Houston with a bunch of astronauts. Astronauts, oh, I could do that, yeah. So I wound up at a, at a dinner evening of about 12 couples, all of them astronauts and spouses. 
One of the guys, half of them were Catholic, as it turns out, so so much for Catholics not doing Bible studies. One of the guys um, came up to me and said, you know, I just want to let you know, I believe in the absolute truth that creation was made in the six days just as described in the book of Genesis. And that's my religion. I just want to let you know that ahead of time. And I'm thinking, you know, have you actually read Genesis? Where it says the world is flat and it's covered with a dome and there's water above and below the dome. You know, where does the shuttle go? How come you don't get wet? (laughs) And I'm thinking, you know, have you actually read Genesis? Where it says the world is flat and it's covered with a dome and there's water above and below the dome. You know, where does the shuttle go? How come you don't get wet? And I choose to stand with the Bible, you know. And even scientifically, it makes no sense. I mean, people like to say, you're crazy because you believe the world is flat. When the joke is on them, it's, to me, I just don't understand how people think. For one, to tell me there are people living upside down in Australia, when I began to think for myself, it makes no sense to me. For someone to tell me it rains upside down in Australia, sideways, it makes no sense to me whatsoever. The fact that people tell me that I am moving 1,000 miles per hour into nothingness makes no sense to me. When I look up and I see the sun, the moon, the stars doing their rounds as God ordained with the exception of Polaris. So biblically, And scientifically, it makes no sense to me, you know. But yet people want to tell you, you're crazy, you're fanatical. I mean, this world is mad, but it shouldn't surprise us because, friends, what you need to understand, true biblical truth is never popular. Look at um, Noah. Was Noah loved? I mean, this one man preaching it's going to rain. They've never seen rain before. And there were millions of people. You know, he was the only one. Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot, you know, standing, trying to be the voice of righteousness in that day and age. Jesus, I couldn't take Jesus for three years, you know. So don't be shaken because the majority don't seem to come on board with this truth. The truth is never popular and the fact that no one can show you from the Bible that we live on a spinning ball shouldn't cause you to doubt but should cause you to stand more firm upon the word of God. And Ellen White is in complete agreement with this herself. I'm sorry to disappoint many Seventh-day Adventists but Ellen White is not the final authority. She tells us this herself. It's the Bible and she confesses herself that she could have been wrong in many things, you know. And if something is not accepted by the Bible, we should do away with it. Nevertheless, I'd like to close this presentation on this quote from Ellen White and I love how she sums up the matter pertaining to this. She tells us, the word of God declares, he that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whosoever keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. It is not enough to nominally assent to the truth. We must have its principles interwoven in the life and wrought into the very character. We may well be afraid of any class who refuse to compare their faith and doctrine with the scriptures. Now note that, because that is pretty key, pretty key. We may be well be afraid, we may well be afraid of any class who refuses to compare their faith and doctrine with the scriptures. She doesn't say her writings their faith with the scriptures. So again, please show me in the Bible where God created a ball that spins around the sun. It's not there. You won't see it. The earth is not a ball. I know Isaiah 40, 22 says he sits upon the circle and many people think a circle means a ball, but it's not. It's two completely different shapes. I've done a presentation on it. In fact, Isaiah 40.22 furthermore confirms the flat geocentric model. The scripture is not there. 
Yeah. You know. So how dare anyone try and attack my faith? Any Christian, Seven Adventist, you know, that's what even makes it worse. And try and tell you you're going off the rails. I mean, this is that's what I call madness in my opinion, you know. Nevertheless, there is safety alone in taking the scriptures as our rule of life and the test of our doctrines. Martin Luther explained, Martin Luther exclaimed, the Bible and the Bible alone is the foundation of our faith. Our work is to uphold the law of God and that includes do not lie. When you are teaching your children that God created the ball to spin around the earth, you are lying. The Bible says, speak ye truth, every man to a neighbour. It's one thing to say that um, you think it's a ball, but it's another thing to say that God created it that way when he didn't. It's your opinion and it's not substantiated by the Bible. Do not lie, plain and simple. The Bible and the Bible alone is the foundation of our faith. Our work is to uphold the law of God. For Christ said that it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than for one tittle of the law to fail. He has said, blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and they may enter in through the gates into their city. Amen. Blessed are they that do his commandments. And a part of that commandment is speak ye the truth, every man to his neighbour. And I just want to speak the truth pertaining to this gross, disgusting lie that has taken the world captive. The greatest lie I think ever. And it's done that to cause doubt in the Bible. And as a Seventh-day Adventist whose faith is in the Bible, it's my duty to uphold the truth of God's word, no matter how unpopular it is. And I pray you also will do the same. Anyway, take care. God bless. And God willing, you will see me in the next video. Take care. Goodbye.